affecting more people. Um, so let's, let's start. Um, I have to thank you all of you for joining today. So I'm happy to welcome to this presentation. This, this is a Kubernetes 101, meaning that we're gonna cover the base of Kubernetes. We're, gonna, we're not gonna talk about advanced topic of Kubernetes or on the basic. So my name is Manuel. I work here in this amazing company, Toltec. Um, I'm part of the cloud team. I work specifically with the Rob Killer backend. Uh, by the way, if you haven't used Rob Killer yet, you should. It's an amazing application. And let's, let's start it. So uh, I want to set expectation. Uh, this is a Kubernetes one, uh, 101. So how many of you have used Kubernetes? <laughs> cool. So, so let's start. So Kubernetes. So uh, we know that everybody loves containers. Uh, everybody loves containers. If you are not using containers, you want you want to use it. If if in your job uh, you are not using container, you are trying to convince your boss to start using container because of everybody uh, loves container and. In my previous job, for example, um, all the applications were deployed directly in, in our server. So what we did, uh, all our, all the developers tried to convince the boss to, to start using container, we start using Docker. Uh, deploying application was more, uh, more easy than before because before we have a, a lot of Java application. So the way to deploy Java application is that easy. You have to build your warm. So at that time, now is now it's easy because we embed Tonka did the application all that kind of stuff. But before you have to create your warm file, then you have to go to the Tonka manager uh, website. You have to stop the application because you don't want to corrupt anything, any Tonka file. So you stop the application and then you upload your warm file and then you start Tonka again. So that's how you, you uh, we used to deploy that. So we changed that, we started using container, and we love container, and then, so when you start using container, you want to add another layer to your application. You want to have more control. You have to, to monitor your application. You have to schedule your, your um, scaling. You want to scale up, scale down. You want to do a lot of stuff. That's how Kubernetes got created. Well, Kubernetes is not the only, um, container orchestration application out there. There is uh, Mesos, there is um, uh, Docker Swarm, there is more. So what we're gonna cover today. So I'm going to define what Kubernetes is. Of course, I'm gonna give you a brief um, history of Kubernetes. Uh, nothing crazy there, just a couple of stuff that I think that you should know. Uh, I'm gonna give you an overview of the Kubernetes architecture and we're going to define our uh, resources, our Kubernetes resources. We're going to do a live demo. So that's my main point here. I want to show you how to deploy application. I want to show you how to create a service. I want to show you how to consume the service. And I want to show you how to roll out a new update. That's my, my goal here today. So what is Kubernetes? Kubernetes is a project for managing, orchestrating, and discovering containers across a set of nodes, cluster. So a cluster basically is a group of nodes. It is 100% open source. It is written in Go, which is my um, uh, favorite language, and it was created by Google. So what the hell a Kubernetes means? So uh, Kubernetes is a Greek for health man. I guess that's why that they have that logo. Uh, a brief history. So Kubernetes was released in June 2014. Um, Kubernetes is an open source version of, of a Google internal system called Born. So Born uh, has been running Kubernetes for over 12 years. So by the way, Kubernetes was rewriting completely Go because a Born uh, it is um, uh, C and C++, it was written in C++. 
So coordinating our architecture. I'm gonna go. I'm not gonna go crazy because there is a, a lot of component in coordinating. So I'm gonna try to just to cover the basic. Um, each coordinated cluster has one master node and one or more uh, worker nodes. Most of the cloud provider they only charge for the worker node. So let's say if it, if you are using Google Cloud and you want to have a cluster with two nodes, technically you will have three nodes, one for the master, but they, they don't charge for that, and two for your application. Uh, communication, uh, we're gonna communicate with Kubernetes using the QCTL command, uh, command line tool. Uh, again, you can use um, uh, your cloud provider UI if you want to. I prefer to use the QCTL in case if I want to move a provider, I don't have to learn a new UI. So I use all the common line and and also because I feel I have more control of Kubernetes. I, I can do more stuff. Sometimes the UI just let you do a few things, not all the things that you can do with the common line. So each worker node room to application. Kubelet to communicate with the master and Kube proxy for networking. So this is a, a small diagram. I don't know if you can see it well. Uh, again, Kubernetes has a lot of components. If you want to see all the components that it is running on Kubernetes uh, cluster, you can uh, check the Kubernetes documentation. For this presentation, I'm just gonna show you the basic again. So here is the QCTL. We use a Q, uh, QCTL to communicate with the API server. Uh, in the master node, you will have a controller manager, you have scheduler, you have etcd, and in the node, you will have, you have a kubelet, um, kube proxy for networking. Kubelet uh, basically is the agent that makes sure that all your containers are running in, in your pod, and kubelet uh, is the one that communicates with the, with the master node. So before I define or before I jump into the Kubernetes resources, I just want to um, define what a container is. I know everybody loves container, but what it is? Container is a piece of uh, software that includes everything needed to run an insulated environment. So in that container, you will have your OS, you will have your application code, you will have all your setting, everything that you need to run your application. So a containerized application uh, should run uh, the same regardless of the environment that you run, that, that, that you are using. So that's why everybody wants to use container. So the most popular container runtime is Docker. But Kubernetes support a rocket, support Docker, and, uh, uh, Docker, whatever. Uh, I think it support more, but I'm not having used, I only use a Docker. And, uh, containers being around longer than Docker. Uh, That's not something new. So, Kubernetes resources. So, if you, I don't know if you see the list, Kubernetes has a lot of resources. I'm just going to talk about three resources, which is deployment, pod, and services. What is a pod? It's very important to know what is a pod because we use pod. Yeah, every day. Pod is a group. Uh, it's a group of container, one or more container. And I don't know why, but in the beginning when I started learning uh, Kubernetes, I was confused about Pod. I thought that Pod it was one container. I don't know why. I think I was confused because most of the time when you create your Pod, you will always have only one container. Most of the time. So that's why I thought, so why we need our Docker image, what we need our container, if container pod is one on one relationship. So I, I was confused about that. And one example of a pod having more than one container is if your database, if you have secure database and you need a proxy to connect to the database, you can have your one pod, you can have your application container, and you can have another uh, the proxy container to communicate with the database. Both of them in a single pod. So containers inside uh, within a pod, they share same storage, same network. And so 
you put, so the logic is you put together in a pod or container that they are tightly related or if one is down, the other one has to be down. They both have to be in the same pod. So it's not the same that you create, um, if you create two different pods, one is down, the other one is working. So if it is an API, uh, you will have a lot of uh, other service hitting that API because it, it is off. But if you put both together, one is down, the other one is down. Because that's the way it should be. So here, Kubernetes, uh, when you create resources in Kubernetes, you use a YAML file. Um, here is the basic um, YAML file for creating um, a pod. I will explain that more when I jump to the uh, live demo. Uh, we're gonna see uh, how to create a pod and all of that. So what is uh, deployment? Very important as well. Control the state of the pod. So that the, the deployment will make sure that all the um, replica that you want to run, it is running. It will remove all unhealthy pods and it will create a new one. So um, also deployment, you set up how you gonna how you want to roll out new update. I will show that <coughs> in my examples. So this is the basic YAML file that you use for creating a new deployment. So what is service? So because pod, they are in a local network. Oh, another thing about pod is if you have a more than one container inside a pod, they communicate each other to local host because they share the same IP, they share the same port uh, and storage. So they communicate each other uh, via, via local host. But if different pod, they can communicate using IP, but what happened? The thing is that pod, they are model, they can die at any time, or, or you can scale up, scale down, and the IP is always changing. So you cannot access a pod uh, using the IP address. You have to create service. That's what service is. Ser service will take care of the networking, it will, it will use label selector, to route traffic to the correct pod. I will show that in my example as well. And, and that's it for the basic. So the more important concepts here are pod uh, deployment and service. Those are the basic. There is more, there is config map if you want to add configuration to, app, to your application. Config map basically is a global storage for your config, you can create your database configuration in a config map, and all your pod uses the same configuration. You also have secrets if you want to um, save a uh, password or credential or, or uh, certificate, whatever the case may be, you can put in a secret, nobody can see. But we're not gonna cover we're not going to cover uh, config map or secret here. So demo. So now that we have a basic knowledge of Kubernetes and what Kubernetes is, I'm going to show you a couple of demo. Oh, let me know if you can see this. Oh, in my first example. I'm, just, I'm going to deploy a Hello World application in a cluster. Hmm? Okay. So in my first application, I'm going to deploy a simple, simple web server, Hello. So how many of you know Go? Okay, this is a Go program. It's very simple, very small. It's just a hello world. It's an HTTP service listening on port 80. It says um, simple service listening on port 80. Uh, I will 
um, print hello from host name. I will explain why I'm doing this because I wanna show you how the load balance is working. So here I have my deployment file. This is a very small and basic um, deployment file. You will have the API version. You might have to be close. Remember, you know, just, just the cat gets cut off a little bit. Oh, like this? Yeah. Okay. All right. So this is the YAML file I'm gonna use for creating my deployment. Um, uh, the, uh, this is uh, all, all the important thing, the API version. We're still using the beta, the, beta, um, the resource kind, because in Kubernetes, you use YAML file for create basically any resource. You have to specify what is the type of the resource that you want to create. In this, in this case, uh, I'm going to create deployment. Uh, the meta, the metadata, uh, this is the name of the deployment. This is the specification. For this specific deployment, I want only one replica. I can have 10 replica, 15 replica, or whatever uh, I want. So in this case, I, I just want only one replica. I can change that later. After I deploy everything, I can change it. So this is the rolling update. This is very important. Um, the rolling update, the max on available, I set to one, I should have zero, because when I deploy, I don't want any pod unavailable. I want zero uh, pod unavailable. So what Kubernetes is gonna do is going to create a new uh, pod. As soon as that pod is healthy, it will delete uh, the, the previous one. So you will always have one pod running. In this case, because I have only one replica. If I have 10 replica and I say, okay, I, I want only one unavailable, Kubernetes will kill one and will create one. It will kill one and will create one because only one should be unavailable. You can play with that depending on your application. If you don't want any replica unavailable, you can put zero. If you want to speed up your deployment, you can set the max surgeon uh, will be uh, like a five if you have 10 replica. So 10 pot, it will, uh, five uh, pot will be created at the same time. And here are the labels. I will explain the labels. This application has this label. We're gonna use that label for the service because service uh, in coordinate, we have service discovery for free. Uh, for many of you, if you have experience working with uh, microservices, you know that in microservices, you need a service discovery because it, you um, you have a lot of microservices, a lot of component running, so you need a way to find your services. So in coordinate, we have that for free. So this is the containers. In this case, I'm, I'm going to apply only one container in this uh, deployment, which is this, my example. I'm going to build my example. I'm going to create this image. So build as I choose as a script. Yes, script, yeah. I, 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 I can show you. This is a simple script. Uh, too small. Let me wait. Okay. Some simple script. That looks familiar. <laughs> I'm just compiling my application because I'm using Go, or it's a compile language. I'm compiling, creating uh, a service object. Uh, I'm building, I'm using this uh, Docker. This is my Docker file, very simple. It's an Alpine 3.7. And so basically when I compile, I'm building my, my Docker image. I'm tagging that image to hello, and I'm pushing that image to Google. You can use any uh, Docker register 
the that you want. Some company they have their own register, so you, you can you can use it. Uh, here we use Google Google register for our image. So, okay, my image is ready. How can this is how I create a deployment? QCTL create minus F deployment. Deployment created. So if you do Q, QCTL get deployments, you will see that this deployment is created. If you do QCTL get pod, you will see that that deployment, uh, one pod was created because of my deployment YAML file, I said that I want only one replica. I can edit my deployment. What about now? I turn off probably. I can edit my deployment. Hello. And I can increase the replica to five. I want five replica. And now you will see the five replica of the same service are created. Well, these two are being created. If you check again, they are created. So my part of my application is deployed, how I consume it. So because your application, if you do QCTL get part minus all, right, you will see that all the pod has internal IP address, so you cannot access them. Um, this is where I create my service. Create my app service. Oh, service jam. Q get services. So here's my service. I have an external IP address. I have to wait a couple of minutes for Kubernetes to uh, generate a new external IP address. Of, or Google, in this case, would give me a new IP address. We have to wait a couple of minutes for that. But the thing is, you need the service to, to access your application. I will show you in a few minutes. We just need to wait. Did you show the service yet? Mm -hmm. uh, cat service YAML. The service YAML, this is my uh, service definition. The service name will be hello service. So if you do QCTL get service, you will see that the name is hello service. So this hello service will select all part that has this label, app, hello. So that's what I define in my deployment. This deployment will have this label. All the, all part created um, uh, for this deploy, uh, deployment will have that label. So that's why the service know which part it will route the, the, the traffic. So I see that I have external IP address already. If I do QS, um, by core that IP address, I will see hello world from this path. We have a lot of path. So this was the one that, that was hit. So if I run this again, I can have another path because I have multiple instances. That was easy. If you want to do that, with Java or or any other environment, that will be something that will require more more configuration to set up a load balance, to deploy an application, and basically to do that will require more work. With Kubernetes, we have all of that. So another thing I want to show you is that the deployment make sure that all the replicas that you want to have running, they are running. 
minute that uh, if I delete this, this part, Uh, Kubernetes will create another one immediately because five replica have to be running all the time and Kubernetes knows. If one replica goes down, Kubernetes will create another one. So five replicas still running. This one was eliminated and this one was created. That's something that if you have your own system, if you have your own server, that's something that you have to do. You have to create your own um, uh, monitoring system. You have to check that all your application is running. If one goes down, you have to do it. You is, there, is there a health check? Would yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it is a health check. I'm gonna show you a health check. If the database goes down uh, or or your application uh, application crash, Kubernetes will restart the application. And that's what that one of one ready is. There's one running and. On ready. If it was not, but not ready, if it failed one check, it would say one slash zero. Yeah. <clears throat> so, that was a part one. I have another example I want to show you. Part two. This Hello World is similar to the other one, except that I create a new endpoint shut down. When I hit that endpoint, I, I basically shut down my application. What I, I want to do with this? I want to show you that Kubernetes try to recover your application. If your application goes down, Kubernetes will restart it. Do that right now. Let me build this one. It'll take a couple of minutes. So, you have, if you have a question, you can ask at any time. We don't have to wait. Uh, to the end. Okay, so let me deploy this. Oh, basically, I have to increase the tool. I'll deal again. So I have a new image. How can I uh, update my deployment? There is two ways to work. If you want to update your deployment, you can do QCTL, edit, deploy. And you have to edit your YAML file and save it. That's one way. The other way is you can use QCTL, set image, if that's the only thing that you want to change because sometimes your deployment, you want to change environment variable, you want to add more stuff, or you want to increase the replica. In this case, because you want to, um, to uh, change only the image, you can do this, and that's it. So if you check your path, the old one are t terminated, and the new one was created. Is there any way you can do like a loop read type of kind of where because right now you're you're deleting everything, right? Yeah. So yeah. There's nothing is up. Well, we have implemented canary release. I don't know if you are familiar with that. The canary. Let's say that you have ten uh, deployment. Uh, I mean, ten parts running. You put one part in a new version, so you will have one. 10 uh, of the traffic regulated to that part, so you will check that. Uh, Blue-green deployment, we haven't implemented here, but uh, um, I guess it is doable with Kubernetes. I think you can just change the service label, so let's say you have hello, green, hello, red, yeah. and you can just change the service. Yeah. 
punching points. Because in this instance, uh, everything is down, right? Well, no, it's not down. Deployments, right? So you have, like right now we have the point below. Yeah. Then we have the point blue and point green. Yeah. And blue is the production one. So in green, you would change that into version three. Yeah. Watch it come up and it's still not deployed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you go to the service and say, green is now. Gosh, that's green in the, in the house. Yeah, but in this case, I didn't, uh, Kubernetes didn't terminate all of them at the same time. Uh, you see all of them terminated because it was too fast. But my rolling update is only one at a time. That's how Kubernetes so you, did it. You essentially had at least one running. Yes, yes. Uh, in this case, we'll have four running all the time. Because my uh, rolling update policy was that only one should be unavailable. So because Kubernetes did it so fast, that's why you said this. You can have zero available if you want that. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> so these are the new parts. If I hit, yeah, shut down, endpoint, if I do QCTL get part, this, this was the one that was shutting down in Kubernetes we started. If you see this, because the, the whole server was, uh, goes down, uh, went down as Kubernetes we started trying to recover it. So if your application for some reason crash, Kubernetes will uh, recover. If you have a memory leak, like uh, that happens sometimes, you have memory leak, the application is working fine now. But in 10 days, it consumes all the memory in your server, the application will, yes, it will be restarted. So in this case, you're covering, you have time to, to fix it, your, to fix the memory leak. You can define the health checks. You can put endpoints in your program that you're choosing and have the health checks do whatever you want. And you can also configure the deployment. How frequently you check the health check and how long to wait for the timeout and how many failures you need to have before it fixes it. Yeah. yeah. In my last example, I have a JAML file with all that. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry. That's, no, that's okay. <laughs> uh, all right, that was the sample number two. So here, this example, we learned that Kubernetes will try to recover. From if your application crashes, will be started trying to recover it. But if you have a, a serious problem that the application is crashing for for data or something, will keep crashing. Kubernetes will keep restarting the path. So that's something that you have to pay attention. So in the part three, uh, in this part. What I want to do is, I want, I'm, I'm going to create a new service to consume the service that I created. So basically, Kubernetes will create DNS for your service name, so you can access your, your, um, your previous service by name. Uh, just to show you, that's how I name my service. Hello service. So I can access that service by name internally in, in, in my cluster. So if I build this. No, I have another name here. Say hello. Oh, it's different? Yeah, it's different. So this service. Um, I call it say hello, the other server was hello, this server was called the other service, and it will show the results. Okay, so I will create QCTL create deployment. Create deployment. And I will also create service. So I have a new service now. Say hello, service. That's my new one. I'm waiting for my store IP address so I can show you. 
But basically, this is what I want to show you. We have Survey Discover for free. If you create a service for your pod, you can access it by name. So if you have more pod, delete pod, or whatever you, you want to do, you still have to use the hello service. And you are still using your deployment. Cost depending. Is that service name only available within that pod? Yes. Uh, not within the pod, within the cluster. Okay. Yeah. Well, if you want to use a domain or whatever to access your application, you, you have to use your external um, your external IP address and set it up in Cloudflare or or in your domain provider. You can set up your domain to point to the IP, and you can then call your service by domain. Okay, I have my IP address. If I turn this IP. Oh, good thing. Oh, this is good. So my deployment failed because the image was not found. So let's fix that. Yeah, because now it is say hello. Now my my pod is created. Yeah, it's created. So now I can do this. Hello from this pod. So this one is consuming this service. So when I call this one, I get a response from this part. So that's what I wanted to show you with this example, that you can call service by name in your cluster. So you don't you don't have an you don't have to use IP. So if you have an, any question at this point. The hello service, the, the one that's being called, does that have to be exposed externally? Uh, no, no, it doesn't have to be exposed externally. There's two types of service. There is service type load balance. That's the one that gives you an external IP address. But you can create a service no port that uh, you don't have to expose that service outside. Cool. Yeah, if you have like a... Oh, yes. I didn't hear. Is, is there like a queuing system that all containers are in use? And you're trying to get like what you need to load balancer? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The service is a load balancer. Okay. Yeah, it's a load balancer. Yeah. It will do a round robin. <clears throat> you're saying all your workers are uh, saturated? Yeah. So he's asking if all your workers are saturated. I think we will treat it as a load balancer. So there might be some problems. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, part four. In this part, in this part, what I want to show you is how to um, roll out a new update. Uh, I'm going to. So I've been doing that basically. I create a new image and update my deployment, and it will roll out. But I want to I want to show you what happened. Um, get deployment. I will. I don't need this deployment anymore. So I can delete it. And if you don't want to delete the deployment, what you can do. And sometimes I do that a lot. I just set the replica to zero. And nothing will be created, and the deployment will still be there. Oops. 
But if you see, this all parts are ter terminated. Say hello. Black gas to zero. So now you don't have pot, you don't have service, but you still have all your deployment there. Yeah, you will see desire zero, current zero. Um, Sometimes if you don't want to delete, if you can make a backup of your deployment and delete if you want to. Delete deployment is as easy as just delete deploy in the name. Hello. We delete it. Say hello. It will be deleted. But I'm going to create this new deployment. Yeah, in this deployment, I have a whole check. I have the lifeness proof. This whole check, Kubernetes will will hit. This, uh, this endpoint on port 80 uh, every second. Uh, every second here. Yeah. Oh, it's duplicate. I'm not, that's not, I'm not there. Yeah, every second. The initial, um, the initial request will be after five seconds. You, you can control all of that in your deployment. Because sometimes your application, uh, if your application uh, take more than 10 seconds of uh, the first time you start, uh, you can set up here an in initial delay second to 10. So this uh, Kubernetes is not going to check your application until it's ready after 10 seconds, basically. Sometimes you, you upload file or you do any bootstrap uh, operation when your application is starting. So at this point, uh, you can set up Kubernetes to check uh, your whole check after X amount of time. You can control all of that. Wouldn't that be redundant during your readiness probe? Wouldn't that be redundant during your readiness probe? No, readiness uh, probe is when your application is ready to reach traffic. So, wait, so you, you did this because you wanted the readiness probe before the readiness probe was up? Yeah, the readiness probe, yeah. Yeah, the writing problem is only in the in the beginning when your application is yeah. ready to start. Yeah, that way, if you did this uh, uh, so that initial play seconds, would the lightness probe start before the readiness probe starts? Yeah, if you define it. Yeah, because the right. Uh, uh, so I don't think it starts probing for lightness. Yeah, 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 I wouldn't think the lightness probe starts until the readiness probe has gotten back to success. It's probably a second after this, probably a second after this. Yeah, that's something that we can test, but I think they have a, a separate. Um, that's a separate configuration, and if you set up this to start early, it will start earlier than the other. So that's something that we can test. Okay. Um, Ingress is definitely not checking for the readiness like that. So. Yeah, I, Ingress, Ingress is another beast. Ingress, yeah. yeah. It won't. So let's create this first. I'm going to compile. Uh, let me see the version first. Version one, okay. Build. Then I will create deployment. Queue create. I have. Deployment and I'm going to create my service. Okay, so get service. Well, this is my new service. I call the service service one. Waiting for the IP. Does Dash W work with get service? Mm -hmm. Does Dash W work with get service? Oh, probably. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, 
attached up to his watch. It will, something change. It will show you, yeah. I have the IP now. I current this uh, version two. I didn't update that, but that's okay. So I'm going to show you the rolling update uh, while true. I'm gonna hit that uh, slip. Yeah. Oh yeah, two. One second. Stop. Okay, so now I'm gonna change that surface. Instead of V2, I'm gonna I'm gonna print V3. When I'm built, you have one there. Hmm? Oh, V1 and oh, V3. <laughs> From back. That's yeah. Yeah, I built my image. I'm gonna call it build three. Build. Okay, almost done. Okay, my new image. What I'm going to do, I'm going to cube CTL set image, deploy service one, container name is service one as well. So if I do roll out, ah. Yeah, that's me. Deploy. If I do QCTO rollout status, deploy service one. So one is out, two out of 10. Two out of 10. You will start seeing V3 here soon. More importantly, it doesn't go down. <clears throat> Four out of ten. Yeah, three. Yeah, you start seeing three. Very cool. Eventually, it will be rolled out completely, and you will only see big three. Yeah, six out of ten. Be faster than the next exactly, yeah. I want it to be slow because I want to show you. <laughs> That's why. <clears throat> Almost done. Yeah, B3 only. We didn't hit power. Nine out of ten, yes. <laughs> so we didn't have any downtime. We deployed, the server was available all the time, and that's how you do it in four days. And if you have any question at this point, So in Kubernetes also you can see all the history, the rollout history of, of your deployment. Rollout history. Um, why surf one? You will see I have I have the I have changed that deployment two times. 
you can use annotation to fill out this uh, column so you know what, what you change on your on your deployment. So if you, if you want to see what was changed on the previous release, you will see here. And also you can roll out your application um, to the previous image if you want to. So I, I will use ETL rollout on do deploy service one. So when I clean this, so you will see V2 again eventually. Yeah. If you do a uh, status you will see here. Yeah, V2 is starting to show up. So how easy is it to deploy? How easy is it to roll out a new deployment? How easy is it to roll back without downtime? Um, I know that all of us, including me, have suffered that in the past when you have to deploy an application at to be at night because uh, you have to take down with everybody, so you have to do it at night. With Kubernetes, you don't have to. If you define all your whole check correctly, and you define all your deployment uh, policy, uh, rollout policy correctly, you, you won't have double time. Unless if you change something in the database or something more complicated that uh, you, you have to take the application down if you are deploying something very complicated. But most of the time, we only fix bug in the code that shouldn't take, we, we shouldn't take the application down for a small bug, and that's it. How do you monitor exceptions and, and like bad status, like, you know, uh, 500s and stuff like that, and tell which version of the code it is coming from? So the status um, 500, you're, you're talking about the HTTP status, right? In your health check or in general, because your application, whoever is consuming your application, have to to um, to work with or with um, errors, right? With Kubernetes, what I think you mean is in your health check, if your health check is not responding to 100, uh, right? That's what you're asking, or well, let's say you push, I, I'm, I'm not entirely sure that if the question may not have been your question. Okay. I don't fully understand this, but let's say you push code that uh, an endpoint that a user wants to hit has a bug in it. Uh -huh. So instead of like returning 200 good code, it's going to, you know, yeah. whatever, it's going to give you a bad code. Yeah. So like monitoring that would be one way to see if the mm -hmm. code is good. Or if there are other set, like other exceptions yeah. you want to see, but you care about which version of code, like if you're carrying. Yeah, like, that's something that you have to handle in your application. You have to log all the error you can create. If you use, uh, in our example, we use Google Cloud. We use Stack Driver <laughs> for monitoring and logging. So what we do is all the error, we log the error, we create metrics around the, the error. If we can check all the log, what error happened, but your app, you have to have some kind of environment variable saying which version is your app, so you can log that, and you can see uh, which, uh, which version of your app is failing. Or even better, you don't have to do that because if you go to your deployment, you will see what was the image that you deployed. So you know what, what, what is the version of your current app version. You know that. So you don't have to, you don't even have to create new environment variables. You don't have to. But if you're running two different versions? Well, that will happen only with Canary release, that you will have two, uh, two different versions running at the same time. But as soon as you approve that release, you will completely roll out the new version. 
With the canary release, we monitor that manually. But if you want to do it automatically, you can create variable variables for that. So, one day on the slash help, maybe the response to the slash help could also be a version. Or you can have uh, headers that from the large variable headers that get returned as well on the request that specify the version of the app that's running. So, there's a few ways to do it from the app. You can carry with a different deployment, you just have an inverted variable that says carry. Yeah, exactly. Also, um, based on a similar question I have, um, so suppose you have two uh, versions that are running, um, I'm assuming I'm not sure what uh, can I do with it, but uh, I'm assuming it's like you have one uh, one uh, instance deployed, yeah, and then until well until it runs R like passes all the tests, and then you say it's, it's good, and then yeah, exactly. uh, yeah. um, deploys for the rest, right? Yeah. So um, say you you are deploying the new version, and then uh, you have 10 replicas running, mm -hmm. um, and for some reason the test failed to catch it, but there are a lot of um, errors in the uh, REST API requests uh, in the new deployment. Mm -hmm. Is that something a Kubernetes would automatically detect and then the rollback, or is that something your error logging should, um, should tell Kubernetes to you know, say, or like tell you that it's, there, there are more errors than um, the previous deployment, so it would be like the rollback. Yeah, Kubernetes won't roll back automatically for you, you have to roll it back. So the, the idea of canary is that someone has to check. Or or you can have a, a automated script ch uh, checking the log uh, to see if there is more error than normal. If your error rate on that pod is too high, that means that your canary is failing. So you have to take it down. So one way that I have done that in the past is your CI CD um, tools that you use for deployment, continue integration. What it does is it will deploy to Canary. So your if you have automated script or something, you check first, and your CI CD uh, tool won't deploy until you accept it. It will ask you, well, do you like to accept this deployment? You have to do it manually. But that's something that you can automate if you want to. If you have access to the log, which is, I can show you. If you have QCTL pod. Cube logs minus F. You have access to the log. You can see all the log. In this application, I'm not logging anything. The only thing I'm logging is uh, the server, the service cutter on port, so it's listening on port 80. That's the only thing I'm logging. But I can log error, I can log uh, any info debug, and I have access to the to the log. Ooh, that's another question. Well, I guess I have another question. So uh, I'm not um, well aware of how it works, uh, how, how these applications work on the server side, but I'm assuming um, the process would not be too different if you had to. Use Kubernetes on the app that's deployed on AWS, but it's a Ruby app. What, how different would it be? Or would it not be too different? Uh, in AWS? Yeah. Well, I, I never used AWS before. I, I know that AWS, you can use Kubernetes if you want to. Okay. They have that optional, I think. Uh, you use uh, uh, EC2, right? Who has more experience with? Uh, I'm assuming it's, that it's interchangeable. You can use essentially any cloud platform. Yeah, that's it. I mean, you're just deploying to G Cloud the, the way that you did it, but you can just, I guess. Yeah. 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 Uh, you will, if you're going to use Kubernetes on AWS, you will basically follow the same thing about you. It will, it will be the same. Yeah, like you would be able to take exactly what you just did there, this is on Kubernetes cluster on AWS. Mm -hmm. The same exact thing for maybe the image registry. Yeah, the range to different. It would be different, right? You might, but that's a, that's a beautiful community of Kubernetes and run and cloud cloud. Yeah. yeah, the image registry, you can host your own Docker registry if you want to. We're using um, Google Cloud. And 
Also, uh, DigitalOcean is going to use Kubernetes. That's a good news. Who doesn't love DigitalOcean? Five dollar server. Yeah. They actually have an awesome Kubernetes web service. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. What is that? Uh, they have a, a Kubernetes web series. Web series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It really goes into specific details on how like, containers work and then it drills down onto Kubernetes. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, but I think uh, Kubernetes is not official out yet. They haven't released it. Well, it would be. That would be awesome. I think. Right? Cool. Yeah.